Let's prepare on compression members. So compression members is nothing but a column only. So in steel structures, we call it specifically as strut. Okay, so now we are going to see the design compressive strength of that compression member. So it is given as PD is equal to AE into FCA. So it is nothing but the area into stress only is given here. So it is the effective sectional area and FCD is the design stress and compression. So now the formula for design uh, stress and compression is given. So all these uh, problems and all is a, it's a just lengthy problem but they won't be asking this in objective questions. But to study the formula and to remember that is important because sometimes they may ask that. Okay. So here the FCD is equal to FY by gamma MO. So we know that it is the stress and it is the partial safety factor by phi plus phi square minus lambda square the power 0.5 okay so phi we will be studying another formula and lambda we know that it is a slenderness ratio okay so this term no that is this 1 by phi plus pi square minus lambda square so this term is alone is called as psi okay so it is called as stress reduction factor so here on the right side I have written no? so it is called as stress reduction factor. So we can simplify this formula as psi into Fy by gamma m o. Okay. And then the expansion for this 5 is given here. So 5 is equal to 0.5 into 1 plus alpha lambda minus 0.2 plus lambda square. Okay. So here alpha is the imperfection factor. So based on the buckling class because column will be buckling only. No? So for specific columns and specific shape of the column the buckling class is actually defined. Okay. So based on that we will be selecting this alpha value. So here if you see means for A class buckling it is 0.21 and for B it is 0.34 for C it is 0.49 and for D it is 0.76. So these are the alpha values that is imperfection factor we have to directly take and substitute in the formula. And for lambda it is uh, root of Fy by Fcc okay but normally for lambda that is the normal slenderness ratio we will be studying it is L by R no but here it is the non-dimensional effective slenderness ratio okay so here the different formula is given so it is root of Fy by uh, into KL by R the whole square by pi square E okay so here this Fcc you know this Fcc only is expanded like this and written so we can write fcc is equal to pi square e by kl by r the whole square okay so this is called as elastic critical stress so where r is we know that it is radius of gyration which is equal to uh, root of i by a okay so these are the formulas to be done to calculate the design compressive strength of any column member in a steel structure and the next thing is the uh, effective length that is the effective slenderness ratio we saw no so it belong to that only this also that is k into l effective length so this we have already studied in the strength of materials for beams what should be the effective uh, length like that we will be studying l by 2 l 2 l like that we will be studying no? so that same thing only here we are studying for steel structures but there will be some difference here okay but everything i have drawn in a horizontal way just uh, reverse it okay so these are columns so it should be drawn like this only if it is a fixed uh, with the fixed end with another end free means the column will be like this okay but everything i have drawn in a horizontal way so just see it in the other way okay so one end fixed and another end free means it is two times the l that is the k will be 2 okay so it is the effective length and if it is one end pinched uh, pinned and pinned or hinged or other end is roller means it is 2 times the l only and both ends are pinned means it is l only so this is also a same in the st uh, strength of materials okay and then one end fixed and another end is roller means it is 1.2 l so this is somewhat different to us and then one end fixed and other end is hinged so it is 0.8 l and both ends are fixed means it is 0.65 L. Whereas in beams we will be studying it is L by 2.5 L. But here it is 0.65 L. Okay. And then this buckling class I told you know. So here for hollow section and hall troll section and all. We will be classifying it as A section. Actually there are different values for I section, for H section. Everything values will be there. But it depends on the dimensions of that I and H also. Okay. So that is not uh, so much important. And it is also a big thing to study. So uh, very much important things are these only. That is the channel, angle. These sections are very very important. So this they have asked in the questions. So studying this is enough. Okay. So here 
here hollow section and hot roll it is a buckling class channel section angle section t section and solid sections are not c class and any built up member is c section uh, c class okay so built up member means uh, the permanent uh, rolled sections is not enough means we will be going for a new member we will be creating a new member by connecting two or uh, three uh, rolled sections okay so that is only called as built up member and then the maximum slenderness ratio so here this is also very important these three values are very very important okay the first case is when the member carry compressive loads from dead and imposed loads okay so when the dead and imposed loads only is applied means it should be less than or equal to 180 and the next case it is resulting only when wind or earthquake actions is happening okay so at that time we will be going for less than or equal to 250 and the third case is compression flange of a beam restrained against the torsional buckling so it is uh, told with the member okay so when a flange is restrained against the buckling it means it is should be less than or equal to 300 okay so these three values are very very important so this is the limit for the maximum slenderness ratio actually the similar thing will be there in tension members also i didn't tell that in that lecture so let us see these three values alone for the tension members also so here when the red load and live load is only applied it should be less than or equal to 180 when all the three loads including the wind or earthquake load is applied means it should be less than or equal to 350 and any other load other than these if any extra load is applied means it should be less than or equal to 400 okay so this is three for tension members then we are going to this built up sections so when the rolled steel section do not provide required sectional area or the large radius of gyration okay so then we'll be going for a new section called built up section so what we'll be actually doing is we'll be connecting two or more sections together by two methods okay one is batten method and another one is lazing method so we'll be studying uh, these two methods now and also the design and uh, certain identifications and specifications also we'll be studying for this so when we want to go for this batten uh, method of connection means when the axial loading that is the load is purely axial means we can go for this batten when the load is somewhat eccentricity to the center point means we go for this lacing so here I have drawn a diagram for lacing system. So in the left and right we are having a vertical member. No? So these are two members of any section it may be. We are connecting do, uh, these two sections with this lacing. So okay, lacings and buttons both are we use some plates only for connecting. So that is only called lacing. Okay, So here only one lacing is done in the first diagram. So we call that as single lacing. When you see the second diagram it is double lacing. Okay, So here the length of the lacing should be uh, it's noted as L here and the angle so angle between the lacing and the uh, vertical member no so that is denoted as theta here and b is the width of that lacing so how much distance a two members should be connected so there are some important uh, points to be studied in this lacing system so we will see that now the first one is the theta value it should be 40 to 70 degree only okay it should not be less than that or greater than that and the next one is the width of the lacing so here the width of the lacing is uh, given based on the diameter of the bolt or rivet used okay so where this rivet and bolt is used means on the point of the connection you can see here in this point in this point and all a bolt or rivet will be fixed by that only the connection is done actually okay so these points no so this di di uh, diameter of the bolt or the rivet only gives you the width value okay so when the diameter is 22 we'll be taking a width of 65 uh, mm when it is 20 we'll be going for 60 when it is 18 we'll be going for 55 when it is 16 we'll be going for 50 okay so this is approximately equal to three times the dia okay so when you see this option 16 when you multiply it with 3 you'll be getting 30 plus 18 so 48 so which is nearly equal to 50 so it is approximately equal to three times the dia so you can remember like that and then the effective slenderness ratio should be increased by 5 percentage okay so this is very very important when you are using lacing system your effective slenderness ratio in all the calculations you should increase by 5 percentage and this is for what means to account for the shear deformations due to the unbalanced horizontal force because we are connecting two different structures okay so to balance all this uh, extra forces occurring there we are increasing the slenderness ratio and the slenderness ratio should not be greater than uh, 145 okay 
and then the effective length for single lacing bolted use l only for single lacing welded it's 0.7 l for double lacing bolted it is 0.7 l and then the minimum thickness of the bar so it should be l by 40 for single lacing and l by 60 for batten or double lacing okay and then the transverse shear so it should resist this shear okay so that is the lacing should resist this shear so it is given as v is equal to 2.5 times the axial load so this axial load is the design load okay so design load means in the question if they gave it as design load means you can directly take it or else if they are uh, if they gave us the acting load or factor load means you should multiply it with 1.5 to get the design load okay and then the force in the lacing member so this is also an important point because the force which is acting in the member like that they'll be asking in the question so it is b by n sin theta so this v is your transverse shear and n is the number so here for single lacing means you should uh, apply 2 here if it is double lacing means you should apply 4 here okay and sin theta theta is the angle between the lacing line and the vertical member and then the batten system so here the batten system a straight plates only will be used for connecting two members okay so here two members are there in vertical and two battens are fixed in the horizontal no? so this is the diagram representing that and here a group of bolts will be given in the point of the connections and the spacing between this is only called as s so it is the distance between the centroid of the bolt or the rivet group okay so the centroid of this bolt group and the centroid of the other member bolt group now so that is only called as the distance between them is only called as s and lb is the distance between the inner bolt okay so for the first bolt which is uh, closer to the end you know so that bolts distance only we call it as lb and c is the spacing of the button so spacing of one button to the second button okay so here also some specifications uh, we want to study as like uh, the same thing in the lacing system so here the number of buttons such that it should be such that it is divided not less than three parts longitudinally okay so when you are taking a member of a vertical column you should split that column by pattern system such that it should at least divide the whole system into three parts okay so this is the condition that is used for batten system and also they are mentioned like this that is minimum four plates should be used or you can use like this two plates in the middle and two plates at the ends like that you can use okay so minimum four should be used so that will be getting a uh, three parts and then the effective length so in the lacing system we saw it should be increased by five percentage though no? here for batten it should be increased for 10 percentage so this is very important and c by r minimum so c is the spacing of battens by r minimum should be greater than should not be greater than uh, 50 or 0.7 times the kl by r naught so kl is the effective length and by r naught and then here also we'll be studying the transfer shear so this is the same thing in lacing 2.5 percentage of the design uh, design axial load and here the longitudinal shear also comes here as an extra okay so here we denote it as v1 which is equal to vc by ns so these are very important formulas that is moment and thickness of batten and the next is the moment on batten so it is vc by 2 times the n and the thickness of batten is t should be greater than lb by 50 okay so here we know v is the shear uh, transfer shear and c is the spacing and n is nothing but here it is the number of battens and s also we saw in the diagram no? so the distance between the centroid of that bolt and then the effective depth and overall depth for the batten is given so it should be greater than 3 times a by 4 for intermediate batten and it should be greater than a for n batten it should be greater than 2b for any batten for overall depth it should be d plus 2 times the edge distance so here i have given a form uh, example thing for lacing button so let us read the question built up column of ismc 300 channels placed back to back at a spacing of 200 mm and carries the axial load of 1500 kilonewton the double lacing provided with an angle of 45 degree so as per IS 800, the lacing member should be designed to resist the design axial load of what? Okay, so to what load it should be designed? So it means the force in the member because it should be, it should meet the force in the member. Okay, so what is the formula for force in the member? It is V by N sin theta. So here we don't know V, but we know N value and theta value also. It's given in the question as 
45 degree okay so to calculate we should do transverse shear so to calculate that we should go for design load so it is 1.5 times the uh, axial load that is 1.5 into 1500 so you are getting 2250 kN and the transverse shear is 2.5 percentage of this so 2.5 by 100 into this value so you'll be getting 56.25 kN so when you apply this in the formula 56.25 by 4 into because it is a double lacing like that's given in the question so n should be 4 into sine 45 so you're getting the answer is 19.88 kilonewton so these uh, questions may be asked because this takes only short time to do it thank you and keep watching for the next lecture on column based